And hello YouTube, this is GS, my name is Martin, and today on a brand new video for tutorials with GS. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at Photoshop and what the difference between the healing brush is and the clone stamp brush is, or well, just the clone stamp. And when you should be using one or the other, they're very similar. And many people who are new to Photoshop uh, tend to not know when to use which one because they do do similar things, but you want to use them in different situations. Now, the clone stamp tool and the healing brush are used popularly for model retouching. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, and I'll definitely show you another example of how you can use the clone stamp and the uh, healing brush if you're trying to like editing on a screenshot or something like that but first um let's go ahead and find the healing brush tool which is which is actually right on top of the clone stamp tool right here the healing brush tool and essentially if we were to zoom in here you see we have all these uh dots right these little specks and we all have them so uh we can easily get rid of these if we wanted to get rid of these all we'd have to do is let me go ahead and make the brush size a bit smaller what the healing brush does it takes a texture and then it copies that texture onto a specific spot that you're coloring over and then mixes the colors in with that texture. So if I want to take this texture right here, I'm going to hold on alt. I take that texture and I color over here. You see that it actually takes the colors surrounding that dot. If we, if we go control Z. That's our texture there, but then it also brings the colors around that area and mixes them together. Compared to the clone stamp tool, if I grab the clone stamp tool here, same thing, we're gonna hold down Alt and then color over. What that basically does is just makes a direct copy. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, why would I wanna use a clone stamp tool ever to do retouching? And the answer to that is when you're close to edges. Now, if you have something like this with a lot of skin around it, you always wanna use the healing brush tool because you can grab the texture from nearby and then color over and the color gets matched same thing here you have some you have some good texture there color over and you can color over there and you can color over there and grab your texture from here color over there and as you can see there's a really nice job at getting rid of those uh, marks those little dots on your skin and filling it in nicely with the color around it without having to worry about uh, clone stamp because a lot of times what people would do is use the clone stamp tool to get rid of something and they'll do that and then they'll grab their smudge tool right here and they'll smudge it out a bit but that makes it very pixelated and you don't want to do it that way so the best way to do it is just to grab your healing brush tool and get texture around it color over it and just like that makes it very easy now in certain areas the healing brush tool won't work for example, say you had like something here. Say you had like a mark here, for example. Um, let's just let's just make a random dot here for tutorial purposes, right? Let's say you had a dot right there, right? And you grab your healing brush tool, your healing brush tool, and you're like, okay, well, I want to sample that area here, and then I'll just color over. You see how that doesn't work? It doesn't work like that because the healing brush takes the colors around so when you get to edges like this you don't want to use the healing brush here you would want to use the clone stamp tool so here we're going to grab a sample here and just color over it like that and if you see like you're getting weird see if you see like you're getting weird strokes for example um say see i want to get say i want to get uh with the clone stamp tool this area right here and I color over. So here again is weird tones here. You can always fix that with the healing brush tool. You know, grab texture and then just color over like so. And it does a really good job at fixing it. So uh, the healing brush tool and the smudge tool, I mean not the smudge, the healing brush tool and the clone stamp tool can work in conjunction together. Uh, just you gotta be careful when you're using them. If you're near the edges, you want to use uh, the clone stamp tool. If you're near the basically not the edges if you're near an area where there's a lot of skin around or there's a lot of uh, non-edges then you can use the clone stamp tool so that's sort of a small little tutorial on retouching uh, i'm pretty sure a lot of you know how to do retouching but um i do know that many people don't know the difference between the healing brush tool and the clone stamp tool so we can just continue going around here if we wanted to with the healing brush because here uh, quite frankly there's nothing there's nothing really, we're not near edges here, so here we can just grab a texture that we want, color over it, and it'll take 
it'll take the colors around the area and we'd be good to go. Uh, near the lips here, the same thing. If you were to have like a mark near the lips here, you would want to use the clone stamp tool. Like maybe maybe right here, the clone stamp tool will be a good idea to use. Because if we grab a texture here and go here, you see, well, it still works there. Maybe here. You'll see that the, you'll see that the healing brush tool works very well uh, with retouching in a lot of areas. But in certain areas, it won't really work. And that's when you want to use the uh, clone stamp tool. But anyhow, that's just for retouching. Let me go ahead and open up a second image where I can show you how you can use the healing brush tool and the clone stamp tool in conjunction together if you're not doing retouching. So here we have a picture of Red Dead Redemption. And say I wanted to, you see a sign up here? Say I wanted to get rid of what the sign is saying here, right? Say I wanted to get rid of those letters. I wanted to put my own letters in there. Well, here it's a great way to use the healing brush tool because you, you'll notice it's kind of hard. Let me just zoom out a bit. It's kind of hard to grab your clone stamp tool and say, okay, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and make this smaller, right? And you'd really have to go in and, you know, grab each little section and go over and then redo it and then grab another section and go over and get another section and go over and get another section and go over. And then you, know, you have to sort of make it look authentic. And while this works, you can do it this way. And you see, as we're doing this, it slowly does uh, get better and whatnot. So you can do this, right? But so in a situation like this, you do want to use your clone stamp tool in conjunction with your healing brush tool. So you don't have to do what I did, which is sample every little area and go over and sample little areas and go over and sample little areas and go over. That'll take a long time. What you can do is simply just uh, grab an area, right, and then just go over it like that. Just go over it like that, like so. Because a clone stamp, you're only getting copies, basically. You're getting a copy of a piece of image, and that copy, you're then going over and copying from one part of your image to another part. Let's get rid of that here, like so. But you see now how we have this weird copied, like this is copied over here. Looks really weird. Uh, with your healing brush tool, you can then, obviously make this smaller, grab grab a texture. So say I want to grab this texture up here. And then just go over it. And it'll make it look a bit more authentic. You see that? It doesn't look like it's just directly clone stamp, copy and paste it over. It actually looks a bit more authentic. And it looks like the sign was never there. So I know probably not... You know, some of these examples are probably not the best examples because you actually have to have like, you have to know when to use these. But hopefully you understand uh, when to use it. The, the, if anything you get out of this video, it should be that use your clone stamp tool in areas where there are no, use your clone stamp tool in areas where there are edges and use your healing brush tool in areas where there are no edges. And if you, if you have something like this right here where it's a lot of different colors together, then use your clone stamp tool first and then use your healing brush second and you can sort of get rid of it uh, very easily. The same with this person up here. We wanted to get rid of this person, as you see. Uh, here we have a lot of areas where different colors are. So you wouldn't, you could use your, you'd use your uh, clone stamp tool first. So if I grab my clone stamp tool here, Right, and we grab some of that and we just go over like so. Right, and go over like so. But you see how we get this weird pattern here, like this weird unauthentic pattern here? Here you can go ahead and grab your healing brush tool again and just grab a texture and obviously want to get a bigger brush. and once again go over now be aware you see how we're getting this weird haze here again once again this is because the healing brush tool takes the colors around it and it does that so what you want to do is actually finish clone stamping this first probably and then you want to do your uh healing brush tool so i'm just gonna quickly go over this section here all right so we got that and now we grab our healing brush tool Right, and we grab a texture, we want that texture, let's say that. And as you can see, as we go over this, it actually does a really good job at filling in, making it look a bit more authentic. And that looks a lot better than how we had it before. 
And you can go over these, you know, a few times if you want. Just grab your texture. And now we zoom out. It looks great. Um, obviously, the more time you take, the better it looks. You could still sort of see that it looks kind of weird and funky. But, you know, you might want to use smaller brushes or not. Or, or might want to use smaller brushes or whatnot. But hopefully you understand the tutorial and hopefully you understand the techniques behind this. If you like this video, if you enjoyed the video, if you're confused about anything, give it a like or place a comment down below. If you have a question, go ahead and give me a question. I'll definitely be answering questions down below if you have any. And uh, you can also donate a dollar to my Patreon page. Anything as low as a dollar is always very helpful and very much appreciated. All you gotta do is click the card in the top right hand corner of the screen and it'll bring you to the page. I also have a gaming channel, vlogging channel, music channel, and advice channel. If you wanna check those out, links are in the description as well as on the end card. And that's pretty much this video. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Mouse Smart and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.